Normally when I make a video like this about a movie outside of it being a moist meter, it's to talk about how unforgivably awful the film is and just kind of tear it apart. That's not how this is going to go today. I actually saw a movie that was so surprisingly good that I have to just glaze it. The movie I'm going to be talking about is Godzilla Minus One. I can't recommend this movie enough. So, I have for quite a while been a, a public enemy to Godzilla fans. I am very harsh on a lot of the Hollywood Godzilla films that come out to the dismay of many fans. And it's not because I hate Godzilla and I despise fun and I'm trying to steal the Christmas like the Grinch or anything. As I've stated many times, I actually love Godzilla. I grew up playing a lot of the video games. I've watched tons of the movies, including a lot of the black and white ones with my parents. Rodan, in particular, is my dad and I's favorite. Like, I do like Godzilla. The reason I've been so harsh on the more modern films is because I think they're just pretty fucking stinky. They've focused on the most boring human characters imaginable and just have a snooze fest of a narrative. It's all just completely hypnotic, generic trash until Godzilla's on screen doing some fun shit. But it's just so sporadic in the modern films, it's just not worth it. They're barely even Godzilla movies. They're basically just like throwaway Tumblr fanfic that occasionally Godzilla makes a cameo in. Except for Godzilla vs. Kong. I actually liked that quite a bit. I thought that was a great ride. So, aside from Godzilla vs. Kong, I have not been a huge fan of the more modern Godzilla films. But now, we have Godzilla Minus One, and I think this film is extraordinary. Not only is just a Godzilla movie, but just a general movie. So even if you're not nostalgic for Godzilla in any way, shape, or form, I still think you will likely enjoy this film. Now, I know Rotten Tomatoes can be a real mixed bag of dog shit here, but for once, I do think they've got these scores right. It deserves to be this high. It is really good, and I want to dive into it. I am going to get into some spoilers, so I'm going to give you a fair warning when I do get there. But for now, let me take you by the hand and show you the light here on what makes this movie so good. So, first and foremost, I want to make it clear, it's not like Godzilla Minus One changes the formula or anything. Godzilla only has five scenes in total. Now, that usually to me would be a detriment. It's like, I'm here for Godzilla. You know, I'm not really here for the lame-ass people. I'm a fucking cringe, organic human being. I want to see a giant kaiju monster lizard fucking shooting nuclear beams out of his mouth and blowing up buildings and playing patty cake with boats. But here, those five scenes, well, I need to stop saying scenes. It's, it's not just scenes. It's like full sequences. Those five sequences that Godzilla are, is in are so special. Like, you get so much out of it. And the bulk of the screen time is spent with human characters. Which, to me, would usually have me like a fucking vampire that's getting garlic in his face. Like, just shying away from it. Like, stop, no, please, not this. But they did something unthinkable. They told an incredible story with these human characters... And they used Godzilla to complement it. Who would have guessed if you actually focused on a good story, you can make the human side of a Godzilla film work? So Godzilla is the bad guy here. He's the villain. He's not the anti-hero. He's not fighting to save the world. He is fucking shit up. And you get to see it in a way that I don't think any other Godzilla movie has even come close to capturing the devastation and the despair that Godzilla is capable of. Like, it... The way they convey the hopelessness when Godzilla is anywhere near life is extraordinary. They do such a good job with it, and it's because you actually care about the humans. In every other Godzilla movie, they're just throwaways. It's like little action figures. They just, you know, pop the head off, throw them in the trash. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Here, you actually feel for the characters because they do a good job of fleshing them out and building the relationships. So the main character is the best the Godzilla franchise has ever seen, in my opinion. So it takes place during World War II initially. The main character was a kamikaze pilot who abandoned his duty and has a run-in very early on with a young Godzilla. And he sees firsthand the power and havoc that it's capable of wreaking. After failing to save the people around him on the island that he was on when Godzilla showed itself for the first time, he returns home feeling ashamed, feeling as though he doesn't deserve to live. He's a coward for not going through with his duty. And he returns to nothing. He doesn't have a family anymore. They were killed during an air raid. And he's just really struggling to see a purpose to his life right now. And then he stumbles into a family. A woman with a baby 
kind of fall into his lap and like move in with him. And they share a really interesting connection that the movie does a great job of building, slowly but surely. So over the course of a couple of years, our main character finds a job, he finds happiness with that woman and the child, though he still feels the, as though he hasn't earned the right to like actually be romantically involved with that woman, but he does feel a responsibility to her and the child to look after them, so he finds this job, and while working this job, Godzilla comes back bigger and badder than ever, and he is fucking again. I love what they've done with Godzilla in this movie. I think this is the most terrifying he's ever been, especially when it comes to his heat breath. It is so fucking good, and it's complemented by incredible sound design. Of course, you get some of the classic Godzilla sounds as well as got like classic Godzilla music, but I think they went above and beyond for this. So, like, his heat breath. It's a very slow buildup, and when he fires it, it unleashes, like, this devastating nuclear blast, and it looks amazing. This is apparently a $15 million budget, but this sits up there at home, like, comfortably with some of the biggest budget movies that come out, like actual blockbusters, $100 million budgets. The visual here, the visuals, I think they crush. There's a couple of times it gets a little shaky and a little wonky, but overall, I think they nailed it on such a small budget, it blows my mind. But anyway, the nuclear blast from the heat breath, it is just so fucking tense. The blast is happening, then silence. And you're just waiting on bated breath for the impending, deafening explosion and shockwave to follow. And the movie showcases all of the destruction that comes with it. Like, I think the way that they have used Godzilla's heat breath in here is the best it's ever been. It is so powerful, and you feel it. Like, it, I, I love it. I I really can't compliment enough what they've done with the heat breath. It's Godzilla's signature move, of course, and I think they've done it a great justice here. Now, I also mentioned soundtrack briefly. Like I said, you will get some of the classic Godzilla music, but they added some incredible orchestral pieces. So when Godzilla comes back for the first time while our main character's on his new job, there is a part where he attacks a giant destroyer. And it reminded me, this is a really weird thing to reference, but it reminded me of Courage the Cowardly Dog during the Doc Gerbil's world chase scene where Doc Gerbil is chasing Courage and there's this unbelievably haunting ethereal orchestral piece playing in the background. That happens here when Godzilla is like destroying this destroyer which just came out of nowhere to save our main character. It's this triumphant moment where it's like, oh, there's hope here, we're saved. And then Godzilla reaches over and flips that fucking table right in their face. He blasts it with his heat breath, he slaps shit around, destroying the entire uh, ship, and it's all so beautiful, because it's not only visually appealing, but it's complemented by an incredible musical piece. And I also think this is one of my favorite Godzilla designs from a visual standpoint. They, of course, borrowed from classic Godzilla designs. They didn't get super fancy, they didn't try and reinvent the wheel with Godzilla, but some of the things they did add to his design really helped bring out this menacing aura and this evilness to him. Like I said, it is like the OG Godzilla design, but modernized, and with that comes, of course, improved visuals on how he does all the shit that he's known for. So when he is using his heat breath, all of his scales are like popping out and then start glowing. And it's almost like a Transformers sequence when he's about ready to blast his heat breath. It's just so cool. And like I said, this is extremely unique where you're going to be okay not seeing more of Godzilla, I think. Because the movie does such a good job with the other characters. The humans are actually good here. Even outside of the family relationship with the lead character, there is a friendly camaraderie with the crew that he's working with. So when he gets that new job, it's with a small team of people around him. And that small team has a great dynamic. And they're all good characters in their own right. And the way they work together is extremely fun. And you care about them. And then they eventually work together to form a plan to fight against Godzilla. And it's a really creative plan. And that whole final sequence where they're trying to execute that plan is extremely tense. It's extremely beautiful to, to watch. But again... Like, the human characters are really good, so even though Godzilla has been the villain, just the straight-up villain in a lot of other movies, I imagine most people 
don't really care, they will still likely root for Godzilla in those films because it's fun to watch him. In this film, I don't think anyone will be rooting for Godzilla because you actually care about the humans that are there now. So that has to be like a fucking franchise first, honestly. Everything this movie aims to do, it fucking nails. It goes back to the roots of Godzilla being like this horrific monster, the product of like atomic bombs and all of that. And the movie's themes are very much about the horrors of war as well as recovering and moving forward. And there's a lot to unpack here, all of which they do a great job with. I would have never expected a Godzilla film to make me care this much about things that aren't Godzilla itself. Like, it's so good. But now, I don't think it's perfect. This is where I'm going to get into spoilers, because I do want to talk about my only two complaints. Now, they're not big complaints by any means, but I want to put them out there on the record. As I've always stated, even my favorite products aren't perfect. Fucking nothing in this world is. Let that be a lesson to all of you. Don't delude yourself into thinking anything's perfect. The only thing perfect is my former Mr. Krabs overdoses on ketamine and dies speedrun world record. That was truly perfection until it was taken from me by someone who got a bit luckier with the root. I I'm getting off on a tangent. Point is, I love the movie. Two complaints I want to point out, though. So my first complaint comes during one of Godzilla's rampages. Old Godzilla's stomping around. He's destroying Ginza. And in Ginza is Noriko, who is the woman who ended up living with our main character, as well as the child that she brought with her. Now, to explain that dynamic, Noriko is not the mother of that child. She had taken that child on during a very tragic thing that happened during the air raids, and the two of them together kind of just stumble into this household with our main character, and they all stay together as a unit, even though they're not married, and really, she's not related to the baby, nor is the main character, but they equally take care and care for the child. Anyway, Noriko is a very important character for obvious reasons. She is working in Ginza during Godzilla's attack. We see her going through peril, and eventually it culminates with Shikishima, the main character, coming to her rescue in order to get her out of there and get back home out of this war path that Godzilla is going down, because he's just this malicious force of nature that, for seemingly no reason, is just destroying everything and fucking everything up. Now, while the two are running away, Godzilla uses his heat breath, and this is the most tragic one because it's used in the heart of Ginza. So he blasts, huge nuclear explosion, and the shockwave is coming right towards Shikishima and Noriko. And it does a classic movie trope that always grinds my asshole. What, as the shockwave's coming, the two of them are standing there stunned, and Noriko pushes Shikishima down an alley, which saves him at the cost of her own life. So then she gets taken away by the shockwave, uh, like blasted back. And Shikishima is fine because of that. That is my least favorite tropes in movies because it's very clearly you wrote yourself into a corner. Like you knew where you wanted to go, but didn't know how to get there. So you fell onto this because the logical thing is, why wouldn't Noriko just grab Shikishima and both of them go into the alley? They are right next to it. It's not like she gave them like a giant fucking force push and sent them 50 yards back into this alley. They were less than a foot away from it. They were both right next to it. She could have just grabbed him and even fallen with him into the alley. Or anything besides just a big push and standing there herself. This is something that I've seen used thousands of times in movies and it just always makes me scratch my head and then puts a frown on my face for a brief moment because I feel like in the real world even during a very high intensity situation even during a panic the natural human instinct during something like that would be to tackle the person like when you see these clips of maybe someone doing a heroic act to stop someone or save someone in the real world usually it's them tackling jumping on the person and getting out of there. Thus, they both end up at the same place. So here, I feel like what would have happened is Noriko would have tackled Shikishima into the alley, and they both would have been safe from the explosion. Not just like, 
shove him. You know, like, it's just, it's a nitpick. It's not the biggest deal in the world. It's just a trope that I don't really like. And then to piggyback off of that, the other complaint I have is actually the very end. And I don't even know if it's a complaint, because I'm kind of 50-50 on it, but I want to mention it anyway. So at the very end, I don't want to get into too crazy of spoilers, but I will tell you this. The very end, he receives a letter that his wife is still alive. She survived this nuclear blast shockwave. And even though a lot of time has elapsed in the movie, he only just now, at the very end of the film, gets the word that she's okay, actually, in the hospital. So then he takes the child to go see her there. And the movie ends with them sharing an embrace as she finally asks, is your war finally over? Because he had been struggling with so much, and after the events of what transpired with the last-ditch effort plan against Godzilla, he goes to see her and a huge weight is lifted off of his shoulder. So, presumably, the two get married and live a very happy life together. It is a feel-good, happy ending, but the reason why I'm kind of divided on my feelings for it is because it feels... A little like it was tacked on at the very end to make it a happy ending. Because how the fuck did she survive the Godzilla heat breath fucking nuclear blast? Like, it's almost an Indiana Jones Kingdom the Crystal Skull situation when he survives a nuke by being in a refrigerator, I guess. But she just (laughs) takes it on the chin. She eats it. Like, it explicitly shows her getting pushed away by the shockwave. And she survived. Somehow. It just seems like they wanted it to be a happy resolution. And I I appreciate that. But it seems like it kind of also goes against some of the themes that were present here. Like, Shikishima is constantly battling these demons that he's created. Where it's his fault the people on that initial island that Godzilla attacked died. And they haunt his dreams and he can't move forward. He doesn't marry Noriko because he's still fighting this war inside of himself. He can't be at peace, thus he can't be with her. And it becomes kind of this looming ghost. And that's something Noriko even says, that these are ghosts that he's created. And in doing so, he never realizes that he can move on and marry Noriko until it's too late when he finally comes to that realization. But then it's not too late because, surprise, she's actually alive. I feel like it just would have been more powerful if they did just commit to it where she didn't survive. But overall, it's hard to be mad at a happy ending. It's not like it feels unearned. It definitely does feel earned for Shikishima. Like, he went through hell. Like, the absolute bottom, like, worst things ever. Despair. Like, he deserved some happiness. Like, it does feel earned, but I do think it would have been harder hitting if they didn't end it that way. Eh, like I said, kind of split on it, but wanted to mention these two things here. My only real complaint really is just that trope of, like, the pushing. Otherwise, I think this is just a really, really good movie. And I think it is the best Godzilla movie. It's my favorite Godzilla movie now. I guess we'll see how the new Godzilla and Kong sizes up to this one. I think they're going to be very different. I don't think it's going to go in the same direction this film did, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I just really, really liked this movie, so I highly recommend it. If you're a Godzilla fan, I think you're going to fucking love it. Even if you're not a Godzilla fan, I think you're also going to enjoy it. There really is a lot to like about this movie. So yeah, that's about it. See ya.